Welcome. Today we're going to talk about syncing your Obsidian Vault with something else besides Obsidian Sync because it is not always the best option. Specifically for my full-time job, we are um, looking at Obsidian and we're going to sync it with Git so that we can publish it live to GitHub pages and keep everything private inside our company uh, and track changes as well so we can see when changes. We have history of everything really easily. That's what I'm going to show you how to set up today. How to sync Obsidian with Git with the Obsidian Git plugin. This will get a little nerdy if the idea of terminal or git or like command line stuff sounds crazy to you. This is probably not for you. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is go over to GitHub. So you have to have a GitHub account. I'm gonna go over to the plus here and hit new repository. I'm gonna call mine Obsidian git sync. And then you want to mark it as private as well, likely. Public will mean everyone can look at it. Private means only you can look at it. And then we will go to create repository. So the next set of commands we're going to look at are these ones. But first, we're going to come over to uh, where I want my uh, GitHub or my Obsidian Vault to be stored. And I'm going to hit sh uh, Shift Command N on Mac OS to call this Obsidian Git sync. Done. So now here's where we get a little nerdy. I'm going to open up terminal and I'm going to clear and I will go to CD for change directory tilde means my home and documents. And I will now go into that was listing the file obsidian git sync. There we go. This is now set. Or I'm now in the right folder for my uh, obsidian vault. So now we're going to need to go over here and open up these three uh, commands here. So we're going to now git uh, add origin. So this is going to tell my local git repository to push to the web version. Now I'm going to switch over to the main branch. And now I'm going to push it up to my remote repository on GitHub. If I come in here. So you will see one file in here called git ignore. I did create this already, uh, and I told it to ignore the DS store file. That is a Mac specific file that uh, tells the file browser how to uh, view the files, whether it's in like icon view or grid view or anything like that. So we don't need that right now. So we can leave this as it is for now, and we're actually going to go over to Obsidian. And now we're going to go to uh, this. For me, it is a, a little planet and a little comet because of my theme, but it's usually like a little square. And we're going to uh, open a folder as vault. And we're going to go to uh, Kurt Kale, Documents, Obsidian Git Sync, and that's it right there. We'll open as vault. And I want to turn on live preview because that's just the best way to do everything. Next up, we need to get our Git plugin going. So we're going to go to Community Plugins. We're going to turn off Safe Mode. We're going to hit the scary screen, turn off Safe Mode. And we're going to Browse and type Git. So we'll take Obsidian Git by Dennis Olahov. We'll install it. We'll enable it. And that's all we're going to do for now. So now we should have this set up so that we have our uh, Git repository all set up and we can now use Git uh, Obsidian Git Sync to make this work. So I'm going to create a new file. Let's call it readme um, because this will show up fancy in um, GitHub. So readme.markdown file shows up kind of fancy as your home page on a GitHub repository. This is a test of Git Sync. Okay, so now there's two things we have to do all the time. Uh, to start, we're going to type git, and you can see I have a bunch of commands here from Obsidian Git, pull, push, edit remotes. What we really want is commit, and so we're going to commit all changes, right, committed 11 files, and then we're going to go to uh, push. Pushed 11 files to remote. So now if I come over here, you can see I have my readme. This is a test of git sync. And we have this dot obsidian folder. So dot folders are hidden folders on Mac OS. And I have a few things in here that I actually probably don't want. Um, specifically, probably the app settings. I don't uh, want to save that. All right, legacy editor or live preview. We can choose not to save that. We can do that by using the git ignore file or appearance. 
So this is if I make any appearance changes to my own uh, version of Obsidian. If I'm going to use the team, I would ignore this because I don't want uh, my team to necessarily have my theme. Uh, but we would want community plugins. We would want core plugins. Now, hotkeys is another one we may ignore because if I change my own personal hotkeys here, I would um, not necessarily want to make that uh, happen for everyone else in our um, team uh, at work. So, But we would want to sync plugins. So if I was going to do that, I would actually come back over to Terminal. And for me, I would type vim dot. So open it in this file. Now I'll have to hit Shift I to see Obsidian. And uh, or see my git ignore file. I can open that up in a new tab. And then I'm a Vim user, so this operates fast. So what I want to do is I would actually come into here and I would type in dot obsidian slash uh, what are the ones I want to ignore? Um, appearance dot json or dot uh, of Obsidian slash hotkeys.json. I would just add those in. Now I've already added them, so it wouldn't actually ignore them now. It would, um, but you have to do this before you create your repository if you want to ignore them for the rest of your team. So I can delete that because I don't actually want to save it. And I'm going to quit it, like force quit without saving. Because I don't want to worry about that if I'm saving it for myself. Now, if we go back over to the repository, every time we make a change currently, like if I want to do another. Another change, I would actually have to go in and hit commit all changes, and then I'd have to go push. We don't really want that though. So if we go back to settings, I'm going to use command comma to do that. And I can go down here to my plugin options and go to Obsidian Git. Right here, I can actually change how often it's going to back up. So I could say every five minutes it will back up. It'll automatically push my changes to the repository. So that's good in that we don't have to actually save it explicitly all the time which is nice. Now we would actually have it saved every five minutes. This is a change that will sync after five minutes. So you can see there we had two files committed and two files pushed to remote. So if we come back over here and the two files would be the setting I changed for the uh, five minute sync, I actually changed it to one minute because I didn't want to sit here for five minutes during a screencast. Oh. We do not hit Shift Command R for force refresh. And now we have another change, and it also would have changed uh, in here, right? So change some files in here around our backup stuff. Well, that's really it for using uh, Git to sync Obsidian. It can be really good for a team. You want to ignore some extra files in the blog post. I've actually listed the files you want to ignore that we ignore on our team. Uh, but this allows us to share documentation with everyone on the team. They can edit it. They can have a local copy all the time, and that's really nice. But some of the limitations are it's kind of nerdy to set up. I and mean, I went through it reasonably quick. And I do this regularly, but I even had off camera some mistakes that I edited it out because I didn't want to show them because there was just things that I did wrong um, that weren't perfect. Now, the other limitation is that this does not work on your mobile device currently. I'm pretty sure we can use working copy uh, on iOS to make a Git repository work and then point Obsidian at it and have it all fine, but it doesn't work by default with the existing uh, code. So in that, you actually have to make your change and then switch over to working copy, commit it, and everything in there. So it's less than ideal uh, if you're heavy on mobile devices for your documentation. If you are only ever on Mac OS to do this or Linux, Windows, then you'll be just fine. This is a good free way to sync your files. It's robust. We sync, I sync code all the time like this. It also helps you uh, if two people change a file. It will also help you uh, reckon the merge in there. So if I change the top of the file and someone else changes the bottom, it'll just change it and it won't worry. But if we both changed uh, something in the middle, it will provide some UI or Git does provide some interfaces for you to actually look at uh, what the changes were and then decide who to merge them, what changes you're going to merge, and then push up the new merged file that had the conflicts. That's it. If you liked the video, thumbs up below. If you loved it, subscribe, hit the bell. YouTube will let you know something happened. Otherwise, you can support the channel by becoming a member, curtismichael.ca slash membership. Take a course, curtismichael.ca slash education. Members get courses included. That's it. Have a good day. Go do something fun.